everyone, welcome to the rcprinter.com YouTube channel and our first ever episode of Should I Build It? I'm your host Jordan Visco. Today we've built the original OpenRC F1 car and uh, today we're going to talk about what's awesome about the building this project and what could maybe use some improvement and uh, we're going to help you decide if this is something you should build for yourself. Uh, so remember, if you're looking for ideas of fun RC projects to build, if you're looking for instructions on how to build them, kits or parts for your next 3D printed RC project, please check us out at rcprinter.com. rcprinter.com Okay, so first off, let's talk about the OpenRC project in general. The concept of OpenRC was dreamt up by a guy named Daniel Nuray in 2013. You can check him out and find more about his projects at danielneray.com. Daniel originally started with a couple of concept cars, uh, the first of which was an open source Truggy RC car, which is kind of a mix between a truck and a stadium racer, and another concept was an open source touring car, but not only was the 2015 F1 car his most popular RC model, but it has actually proved to be the most popular 3D printed RC car of all time. On Thingiverse, it actually has over 330,000 downloads. Over the years since 2015, Daniel has made many updates to the car to make it a bit wider, a bit lower, and also just generally resemble the design a bit more of the more modern F1 cars. Uh, but for today, we're sticking with the original design, the, the most popular one. So let's talk about that design. Uh, first off, I have to say that just looking at the model here, it looks just like a ton of fun. Uh, everyone I've shown this car to really loves the design, so the project gets top marks for the coolness factor. Uh, and the design itself, though, includes a lot of ingenuity. Um, first off, the base here, you can see, um, is printed in two different parts, uh, with a split down the middle here, and those two parts just easily slide together uh, without any other connecting parts or any glue. And uh, they're just held in place when the screws are screwed into the body. Um, the body is actually attached using M3 screws, and instead of um, putting these screws right into the plastic, which is what most um, 3D printed RC car builds are doing, they actually go into little nuts. Um, there's little spaces for the nuts um, designed into the plastic, and what that allows you to do is to take the part, or the uh, RC car, apart and put it back together again numerous times without having to worry about any of those uh, little screws stripping, so that's uh, a great design feature. Also, um, the body is printed in a number of different parts, and again, that's so that it can be 3D printed on a standard FDM printer like a Ender 3 or a Prusa i3, uh, which is what this was printed on. And uh, the parts of the body are printed at 40, they seem to be about 45, maybe 50 degree angles here. And what that allows you to do is when you connect them, again with, um, with the screws and the nuts, uh, you can get your tool in there at a 45 degree angle to be perpendicular to the plane that you're working on so you don't have to fudge around with um, little allen keys at angles or anything like that you can just put your tool straight in and same thing with here on this side the angle cut of the body is right there and you can easily get your tool in here to connect this piece Daniel has also created these uh, really cool front and rear spoilers which stay true to the F1 design um, one thing to note about them is they are pretty thin. We've definitely broken ours. You can see this one here was broken and um, I've glued it back together, but it's a 3D printed model so you can easily 3D print these parts and have uh, even a couple extras uh, sitting around if you know that things like the tail wing and the front spoiler are something that are going to break. Next let's talk about accessing the electronics. Um, instead of using standard body clips like you would on many RC designs, uh, Daniel has designed these side clips here that look like they're part of the model. Um, so you just pop them off like this, There's one there, one there, and you can access your electronics inside, um, which is a super great feature, and there's this little nib on the top of this model right there, and you can slide that into the hole and push it down on top, and then again these body clips just slide, oops, slide back into place here, like that. And um, <clears throat> they look very sleek, and most people wouldn't even know they're there as they look like they're just part of the F1 design. So next, let's talk a bit about uh, printing materials. You can print it in whatever you want, but Daniel recommends printing in PLA. Now, PLA is not one of the stronger plastics you can 3D print with, but as long as you print with many perimeters, uh, the model should be plenty strong enough in PLA. I'd recommend with printing six plus perimeters for a very solid model. 
Um, also, one thing to note is that many of the parts in the steering are a bit thin as well, and um, there's a lot of stress that goes on the gears in the back, so I would recommend printing at least those parts with 100% infill, um, just in case you're banging it around. An open uh, wheel design like this is going to lend itself to having the front steering pieces break, so definitely lots of parameters and lots of infill. So we've actually printed our model not in PLA. We did ours in um, PETG uh, for a little bit of added strength. We have a Prusa i3 and it prints in PET PETG wonderfully. Um, I wouldn't really recommend PETG though and the reason is that it's more prone to shrinkage and warping than something like a PLA. And what we found is that the little nuts that we're using that we're screwing into uh, they kind of slide around a little bit in their sockets. They don't fit in there nice and tight. Um, I suppose we could have printed with uh, a bit of over extrusion and that could have helped, but um, I would recommend just uh, sticking with the, the PLA. The other thing is the servo saver that's inside here. Um, it's a bit slippy and doesn't fit as nicely as I think it would uh, if it printed it in PLA as well. You could also print an ABS or nylon, but again, I wouldn't recommend it as the potential for shrinking and warping is even greater. Uh, those materials are notoriously hard to work with, and ABS, ABS also gives off some terrible noxious fumes that uh, are quite terrible for you and can give you massive headaches unless you have uh, the right type of ventilation. It's also interesting to note that there is a two-color version of this that you can print if you have a uh, multi-material system for your printer, uh, but we've just chosen to print in one material here. Okay, so next let's talk about some of the 3D printed drive components in the back here. Um, first, the uh, RC car uses a direct drive system with no 3D printed differential. Um, and you can see here that the pinion just connects right to this spur gear. The spur gear is mounted right on this rear axle and uh, both rear tires turn in unison there. Um, and so what that means is that these two back wheels are always going to be turning at the exact same rate, even when cornering. And that can result in some slipping and make the model a bit harder to control. To fix this, there's actually uh, an open source 3D printed rear differential that you can download off of Thingiverse. And um, when you print that and install it, it'll allow the rear wheels to turn at different rates so you don't have that slipping issue. I don't have that installed here, but I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Installing a rear differential should really help reduce some of the spinning, but another option to get better handling is to change your tires. So let's talk about tires for a bit. You have a few options here. Um, the project comes with 3D printable wheels and tires that look really authentic, uh, like F1 tires, and are quite fun to print and put together and play around with. However, the tires themselves are a bit uh, slippy uh, because they're printed in TPU, and uh, TPU is not a great material for tires. It's a bit hard. Um, so you should definitely expect that if you print these tires, you're going to be spinning out a lot. And that's what we found. Uh, and a lot of the other people online who printed these tires had the same thing. So to fix this, Daniel Nerea includes in the STL files 3D printable rims for Tamiya F104 tires, uh, which look very similar to this. They're very authentic looking for an F uh, series vehicle. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I looked online for those Tamiya tires and I wasn't able to find a good source that had them in stock. Um, so that wasn't an option for me. If you can find them, uh, that seems like a great option. Another option, and the one I decided to go with, um, was these. So after um, some searching online, I was able to find these 3D printed wheel adapters uh, on prusaprinters.org, Prusa uh, which makes the OpenRC hubs fit any 12 millimeter hex wheel um, with a standard 1 10th RC car. Uh, one tenth scale RC car wheel. So I printed a set of those and then I was able to order any cheap set of one tenth scale uh, tires with uh, wheels with hex hubs that I could find online. I settled on these ones here and I think they look pretty slick. I'm very happy with them. The grip is far better than uh, with the stock TPU ones and I think they look a bit cool although they don't have that authentic F1 style. So let's talk a bit about the gearing. Unfortunately, with the larger, stickier tires, I found that the original gearing uh, didn't suit the motor that I had purchased. Um, I was having some issues with the car being sluggish off the line and with braking and switching from forward to reverse. So I went online to Thingiverse and I found these, which is a new set of spur gear and pinions. So the spur gear that I now have installed on it is 46 teeth. The original one is this orange one here and it's a 40 tooth gear. 
And then um, the set of pinions that I printed off go up from nine tooth up to 13 teeth. And the original one that it came with was a 14 tooth. So I settled on the 46 tooth spur with the nine tooth pinion and that seemed to work great for the motor that I had. Um, and I'll leave a link to the gears I printed in the video description as well if you find the same thing with your model. If it uh, seems like um, the motor's struggling a bit, try changing your gearing a bit. All right, let's talk about the motor for a bit. Um, I opted for a cheap brushless motor off Banggood by Surpass Hobby in this project, but I have to say that I don't think that, you can see it right there, uh, hidden right down here. I don't think that brushless power is really required for the F1 car. Um, this motor provides a lot of power and makes the model go extremely fast, but I'd say before ordering you should think about what your use case for the model is. Being 3D printed, it's not likely going to be as strong as an uh, injected molded plastic RC car that you buy at your local hobby shop. So you're probably not, wanna, not gonna wanna go bashing with it and uh, drive it with maxed out speed anyways. If I were to order again, uh, I think I'd save the money and go for an even less expensive brush motor in ESC. For brush motors, Daniel says he recommends something around 36 turns. For the size of the motor, the instructions call for a 540 size motor, which has a 36 millimeter diameter. But I have to say mine's a 540, and after replacing the gears and changing the position of the motor slightly, it didn't quite fit in afterwards, and I did end up having to shave a little bit of this white housing here in order to get it to fit. So if you're gonna go with a different motor than the ones he recommends, definitely don't go any bigger uh, than a 540 motor, which is one of the most common sizes. The ESC is pretty simple. You're gonna get a brushed or unbrushed one, depending on the motor you're, you've chosen, and you're gonna get one that has enough amps to feed your motor. For my brushless motor here, I believe you're using a 60 amp ESC, uh, which came bundled as a kit with the motor. Um, now it has an integrated fan, and the fan itself is quite noisy, which is another reason not uh, to go for a brush motor and to choose a brushed setup instead, uh, which is likely not going to be as power hungry and generate as much heat and likely not going to require a fan. Uh, noise aside, the fan also makes it a bit harder to fit the cover on top, especially when the wires are running over top of the fan like they like to do. Um, and that just makes it a bit harder to close the cover. So in my opinion, going with the less hungry brushed motor is the way to go. For my battery here, I've decided to run a cheap two cell, 2200 milliamp hour uh, LiPo battery. And I think that's a great choice for my setup. I'd estimate it gets me about 15 minutes of runtime and all the power I want out of this model. You could upgrade to a 3S if your electronics can take it. Uh, but again, I don't think max power uh, and max speed should really be your main objective with this model. Uh, you could also upgrade to a larger milliamp hour battery for a longer runtime. Uh, but with a longer runtime, you're gonna get a larger battery. And the compartment here is only 10 centimeters long, so that's something to keep in mind. You wanna get a battery that's going to fit. Next, the radio. Daniel recommends this radio, which is a really nice Flysky FS GT3C. Um, it has this digital display here and lots of cool options that you can scroll through. Uh, it also has a chargeable battery. Um, but honestly, I think it's a bit more than you need for this model, and you should be able to find something a bit cheaper as these aren't the cheapest one out there. Um, I would go for something like this, which is a Flysky FS GT2B, and uh, it's got everything you need. Um, it's going to be a bit easier to use, and uh, it's a great choice for, for your model, and both uh, of these radios will come with a receiver as well. Okay, so finally let's talk about the steering. Uh, Daniel uses a micro servo in this model, which looks like this right here. Um, and it's a bit small, but obviously there's just not a ton of space inside here. Uh, normally on a one-tenth scale model, you'd be seeing one that's about this size, which is just a standard sized um, uh, servo. And uh, he's obviously gone with a smaller version to save space. In order to compensate for the smaller version, he's created a servo saver inside the steering, <coughs> which allows the right side and left side of the steering uh, to slip if you hit something with one of your wheels instead of destroying your servo. Personally, I didn't find the servo saver, the servo saver worked that great, uh, possibly because I printed in PETG and there was some shrinkage and a bit more slippiness uh, with that material. Um, and it made too much play in my steering, so I opted just to glue mine together and risk the servo, uh, the servo itself in favor of some tighter steering. Hopefully, yours won't have that issue. 
For the steering link rod, I've used a cheap elongated paper clip instead of stronger metal rods, <clears throat> and that should bend before breaking the servo, which it has done a few times uh, when I've had a crash, and I haven't had any issues with the servo yet. Okay, so what's the verdict here? Should you print your own Open RC F1 car? Well, let's recap. The model gets really high marks on the design for just how cool it looks and how easy it is to put together and put together again and again uh, if you need to. And uh, you're going to be able to impress your friends. Uh, we love the ingenuity of the design with the cool side clips and the snap together base and different options for wheels and 45 degree cuts and everything that it uh, has integrated in it. Also, being the number one printed RC car in the world means you can find lots of documentation available online. If you need additional support for your build or if you want to print some add-ons to do things like change your gearing, print new tires, or even add a rear differential. <clears throat> what this all means is that even if you're very new to RC in general and even new to 3D printing, you're going to be able to tackle this project and have some success. Unfortunately, we have to give it a bit lower marks on the strength of the 3D parts, especially in the steering and on the front and rear wings. However, those aren't necessarily issues with the design of the car so much as just general open wheel, big winged designs of F1 vehicles in general, which are always just going to be prone to more braking when crashed. So do we think you should build your own open RC F1 car? Yes, definitely you should build one. The model is a ton of fun and the whole build process will give you nothing but joy. Thanks for taking the time to watch our review of the Open RC F1 car project, and remember, if you're looking for ideas of cool projects to build, instructions, build kits, or parts, check us out at rcprinter.com.